Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and here we are with our basic vital bar tutorial for NGUI. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. And I'm starting off by this completely empty scene, so I'm going to start off by uh, creating another UI tool. So we're going to go ahead and keep the layer the same as we had before. I'm just going to make it a simple 2D camera and I'm going to go ahead and just create it. So that gives us our starting point. Now I'm going to want to go ahead and create a widget. Now, I'm going to have to assign my atlas again. So if we open this up, uh, we do have the fantasy one. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And the font, uh, we're going to take the fantasy font normal. So we'll go ahead, we'll select that as well. And I'm going to want to go ahead and add a progress bar or a slider. Now really the only difference is uh, the slider has that little knob on it, at least as far as I can see. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. Uh, the background, one, I'll use the flat outline the foreground I'm actually going to use something different I'm going to try bright and I'm going to go ahead and add it to my hierarchy here underneath the panel and right away I'm going to go change the name to a vital bar now the reason why I don't call it a health bar is because a lot of games have you know like a, either like a health bar maybe a mana bar energy bar I want this to be a universal that can be used for all of them so I'm just going to call it a vital bar for now and if we go ahead and open this up it has a background and a foreground now the foreground, I'm going to go ahead and change the color to red because I'm going to start off with uh, a health bar. So we'll go ahead and the way we want this to work is we want to be able to adjust the scale in the foreground. And as we shrink it down, it exposes the background. Now I'm going to leave it open just a little bit here so I can see the background. I'll select this. I'm going to change its color. And uh, I want it to be fairly dark, maybe not black, but pretty dark. All right. And I want to make sure that it's transparent. It looks pretty transparent. But just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and grab my camera, and I'll just change the color. So yeah, you can see that little blue behind it. So I might actually come in and take my background and adjust the opacity of the color I'm using, just to give it a bit more transparency. Ah, uh, adjust to what you like. All right, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my foreground. I'm going to bring it up to the exact same value as my background again, which is 200. And you could sit down and fill around with all the numbers. Maybe you don't you want the foreground to be a little bit uh, thinner than the background. So you might want to do something you know, like 26, take two off the top and the bottom. Let you see the nice border and everything else. For now, I just want it working. I don't really care about how it looks. I'm going to want to be changing the sprites that I'm using anyway later. But for now, let's just get the code working. All right, so I'm going to start off. I'm going to move this up uh, probably close to the center of the screen here. And I do want it bigger. So make sure you have the parent object selected and I'm going to scale. So yeah, sure, about here. Uh, let's just round this off. Let's make it three. And I will have to recenter this. I don't care about if it's absolutely centered. Just something nice and big that I can see. So right about there. I'm going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to go down and make a script. And we're going to be making quite a few different type of vital bars. This is the most basic one, so I'm going to go ahead and create a C sharp script and call it Vital Bar Basic. So let's go ahead and open this up in Mono Develop. Uh, here we go. Actually, the one thing I do want to point out before we actually start scripting anything, uh, if you go ahead and take a look here, we have the pivot point set to left, and that means that's the way it's going to scroll as it shrinks. So as the size starts to go down, as we start losing health, it goes to the left. If we were to actually go through and change the pivot points, uh, let's go right, and that means we'll have to change this one here to right. I'll move it over so we can see it again. Whoops, let's gotta move the whole thing over. And then start shrinking it down. Goes to the right, and of course we also have a center. And of course you gotta make the background the same. Uh, we'll notice that the foreground now shrinks towards the center. So really depending how you want it to go is where you're going to want to change the pivot point. And we might actually add that code a little bit later on to automatically set that for us. But I do know that for now, I just want it to go to the left. Something This is just supposed to be a basic example. So let's make them both left. Uh, again, bring this up to 200. And move this over to, I guess, what, negative 3. A little bit more. About there. So we'll go ahead, go back into the script. 
And the first thing I'm going to want to do is actually get a reference to the component UI scroll bar uh, right here. Oh, sorry, the slider. So I'm going to make it public first just to show how it's getting it. So public UI slider, and I'm just going to call this slider. And I'm going to grab this reference in the awake function. So awake, and I need my void up there. All I'm going to do is say slider is equal to get component. The component I want is my UI slider. And that's it. So I am going to put a check in here first just to make sure that I did grab it. So I'm going to say if slider is equal to null, I do want to throw a debug out. Uh, yeah, we'll use parenthesis on this one. So I'm going to debug dot log error. And I want to tell them that, you know, if it didn't get it, that means that there wasn't one there and that this should add one. Uh, could not find the UI slider component. Now let's also go ahead and throw a return statement in here so it gets out. And now the next thing I actually want to do is get the size of the foreground, or at least its scale. So this number here. So the easy way to get that is since I already have a reference to the UI slider component, I'm going to access the foreground, whatever you've named it, uh, through this foreground property. And we'll do that. We'll have to store it. So I'm going to put it up here. I'm going to create a public again just so we can see it. And it's going to be a type float. And I'm just going to call this max width. And I'll put this down here. So max width is equal to, and we'll want to get the slider dot foreground dot transform. Uh, actually, I might not need the transform. I might just be able to go to the local scale. Yeah. And we want the X property. So we'll save that off. I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And of course, we actually need to attach the script. So I'll go ahead, make sure I have the vital bar selected and attach the script to it. And we take a look here, there's no reference and we have a max width of zero. So if we start it up, these should change. There we go. So we know they are grabbing the reference the right way. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and make them private. Now we could leave them public for now until we're actually done, but I'm just going to go ahead and actually do it now. So I'm going to refactor this. I want to rename it. And uh, for anyone that's followed any of my tutorials knows I like to make my private variables have a slash in front of them. It's just my visual way of me being able to look at it and go, oh, that's a private variable. Uh, but anyway, so we've got that done and that's pretty much all I want to do in the awake function. Now is these other functions that Unity gives you, start and update, I'm not going to be using those. Uh, the next thing I want to do is actually create a function that is responsible for updating the display. So that's actually what I'm going to call it. So public void update display. And we'll probably be making a few of these. Uh, the first one, I just want to be able to take a float number. So basically the way this is going to work is it's, it assigns a percentage to me. I'm going to be taking in a percentage. So let's say it passes in 50%. And this function is going to be responsible for scaling this down to 50%, regardless of how big it is. So we'll add some comments in a little bit later. Uh, for now, I just want to try to keep it short and just get it working. So the line we need to actually make that work is slider dot uh, forward. Uh, I forgot I renamed it already. So slider dot foreground dot local scale. Now you cannot assign a value, value to just the X property. You got to do the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new vector three. Uh, but for the X value, I'm just going to take the max width 
and I'm going to multiply it by the value that's being passed in. And then for the rest, I'm actually just going to take the slider, foreground, local scales, we'll cut and paste that in. And we'll just grab the Y value and the Z value. Uh, taking a quick look here, that should be okay. And let's go ahead and save this off. And uh, make sure we have no errors. So we'll head over to the console. Everything looks good there. So I'm going to head back in. And I'm going to go back up to the wake function. And probably actually can't do it in the wake function. I'm actually going to make the start function. Uh, just for the end of this video. And what I want to do is actually just call this function here. Uh, the later videos will be using the driver, but I just want to quickly test. So I am actually going to pass in a 50% uh, value, so it should shrink my bar down to 50%. Uh, so let's go ahead. No errors. We'll start this up. And there we go. So it is actually doing it. And of course, we could adjust that value. Uh, let's make it 75%. And we start it back up. Uh, there we go. But there's still a bit more we want to do. But that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll start expanding on this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.